Keeping your suspension forks well lubricated and clean is the key to both longevity of performance and of course making sure they feel really good and slick on that small bump stuff. Here's how you do it. Now the idea behind a fork lower leg service is to make sure that the telescopic action continues as it should do. Now think what's happening, you've got the lower part of the fork and this slides over the upper part of the fork. As soon as there's any friction or debris or dirt and muck in there, it's not gonna be doing its job properly. So at the bottom of each fork on the inside, you have what's called a bath and you have a small amount of fluid here that helps the sliding action. Over time that can get it can get gunked up from stuff that's ingested into the fork and of course it can dry up as well. So it's really important to make sure you do this from time to time. Now most fork manufacturers will recommend you do this sort of service approximately every 50 hours of riding. Although I wouldn't pay too much attention to that because it depends wildly on where you ride. If you ride somewhere extremely dusty, your forks are certainly gonna dry out quicker. Likewise, if you ride somewhere extremely wet, they're just gonna ingest more stuff that can contaminate any moisture, uh, any oil even that's on the inside there. So uh, it's kind of up to you to monitor that. Just use the 50 hours as a bit of a guideline. Now I'm using a Fox 36 here, but the principle is pretty much the same for any modern suspension fork. Now the only major differences between them in the way they sort of disassemble is the fact that on Fox forks, for example, you have foot nuts on these, so you need a socket set to undo these. Whereas on a RockShox fork, you have Allen bolts. I think you have a four or five mil on the bottom there. So it's just slightly different in the way you take them apart, but the same principle. So you'll just need to check this with the brand that you're working on. And then of course, there's the oil on the inside. You'll have different oils that you need for both the damper leg and the air leg, and it will be different oil weights and different amounts. So you just need to check that for your specific manufacturer. I'm just gonna put a link in the description underneath for both Fox and RockShots because I have charts for all of their forks for all years on there. So super easy to find out what you want. Uh, I've got my oils ready here. Okay, so tools for the job. This will vary dependent on your particular forks. I'm just gonna list what I'm gonna be using today for my Fox 36. Uh, some rubber nitrile gloves, uh, you can use latex or anything like that. Uh, they're good because of the fact they protect your hands from the oil, but also means you can actually grip the things as well because you're gonna get a bit messy doing this job. You're gonna need a mallet with either a soft plastic or rubber ending on it, uh, or even a wooden mallet, that would do, no problem. Something you can use as a pick, uh, obviously a pick is the best thing for that purpose. Depending on your fork, you're gonna need a tiny little Allen key. I need a two millimeter for this one to remove the rebound dial on the bottom of the fork there. Depending how advanced you're gonna go with this, you might want some replacement foam rings. Uh, they look a little bit like calamari, but don't be tempted to eat these things. And you could replace the seals in them, although I wouldn't recommend doing this without the tooling for this. I'll explain this when we get to that stage. You'll need a couple of different syringes to put the oil inside the fork. You'll need a shock pump. For this fork, I'm gonna need some sockets. So I need a 32 mil socket for the air chamber there, and I need a 10 and a 15 to remove the lower legs. Now, if your fork, for example, is a step cast option, there's one more thing you're gonna need, and this might put you off doing this at home. Because of the fact the foot nuts are actually here, you need this specific tool to allow you to reach in there to actually release them. So if that's the case with your fork, you might be better off getting them serviced at your local bike shop just because of the fact that tooling is quite expensive. And lastly, you're gonna need some lubricants and things to clean them with. So I'm gonna use disc brake cleaner, but you can use just regular isopropyl alcohol uh, to make sure there's no sort of residue on the forks as such. You'll need different oils for your fork. I need 20 weight uh, in these particular forks and five weight. So five goes on the damper leg, 20 weight goes on the air leg, and you'll need some suspension grease. There's loads of different options on the market, and essentially it's just a small amount just to rub around the inside of the seals. Okay, and the last thing you're gonna need is something to catch that oil in. Uh, you could use an old takeaway container, you could use some old mugs. I'm using our trusty park tool tray here, and you'll obviously need to recycle that or discard that correctly afterwards. Now you need to do a little bit of prep before you get started. So if you have a work stand at home, it will definitely make this process easier. Now I've decided to take the fork off the bike. Uh, it's much easier to do it this way and it's easier to show you, uh, but you don't have to do this. You can do this on the bike as well. So if that puts you off, just do it on the bike. I'm using our work stand here that I've just put behind the counter here so I can mount the fork on the inside here. Makes it nice and easy and I'm not gonna be able to damage that steerer tube because the clamp of course is designed for frame tubes. Uh, so it's almost perfect for the job. If you're gonna put it in a vise, make sure you use soft jaws on there or some sort of protection around your steerer tube when you clamp it. Uh, you don't wanna score it or do any sort of damage to it. Okay, so I've set down some shop towel on the work surface and just before I get going, it's gonna get messy. So chuck a set of gloves on now. 
Now, something to say here is fork manufacturers will tend to recommend that you remove air from the air chamber when you do this process, just for safety. But something to note when you do this, well, two things. Firstly, take note of the air pressure that's already in your fork. That means when you go to inflate them afterwards, you already know what that is. You'll get on the trails quicker. But secondly, it doesn't always work when you're removing the fork because of the fact the basic construction of the fork, you have the outer leg, you have the inner leg, and on the inside of these, you have shafts or rods that connect to the bottom of the legs. Now, when you undo the bolts or nuts on the bottom, you need to shock these loose to make sure they're not stuck there. Sometimes when you're undoing this, if they're already loose, uh, which may be the case on your fork, as you undo the nuts or bolts on the bottom, you might just end up spinning those rods. So I find this part of the process is actually better to leave the air in, and if you want to remove the air once they're loose, that's the time to do it. So I'm just going to put this straight into the work stand now. That's a pretty good height where it is. I'm actually going to start with getting the oil pan underneath. So as I said, on some forks, you'll have Allen key bolts on the bottom here. And in fact, something cool on the RockShox ones is it actually says on them the, the amount of oil it takes in each side. So it's quite cool to note for that. So I'm going to start with the 10 mil and just loosen this. Now, whatever style you have at the bottom, nuts or bolts, don't loosen them fully because you'll need these to just shock the inners loose slightly. Now, before I do the other one, you need to remove the little cap on here that you get on the Fox Forks to protect the rebound adjuster. Sometimes these get stuck on because they take a bit of a hit. Yours might have lots of scars from rock strikes. If that's the case, you might need some like locking pliers or something like that to remove it. Uh, they can get a bit stuck. So use this opportunity to actually clean them. And if yours is damaged, it might be worth getting a fresh one. Uh, two mil Allen key to remove that rebound adjuster. And then just carefully slide that off. Put that to the side for safekeeping for later on. Okay, so 15 mil socket on this side now. Now carefully just undo that. You don't want your socket to slip, so only use good tools if you can for this. Same principle, don't undo it all the way. And you're gonna use these sockets or Allen keys if you're in RockShox fork, just to shock the actual lowers loose. That will hopefully be enough. And the same on this side. And we'll find out now if that is loose enough because uh, they should slide off. Now note on the bottom here, you have washers between the nut and the bottom of the fork, they're called crush washers. If your ones look really mashed up, you probably want to get some fresh ones because of the fact that that's essentially your oil seal at the bottom there. I mean, it's a low pressure unit, so it's nothing crazy, but you could get an oil leak. Now at this stage, you could be able to slide them off. There we go, and out comes the oil. That's why it's important to be ready with your shop towel and something to drain the oil into. We'll just let that cycle down for a second. And in fact, I'm going to remove the fork just from the work stand for a second, just to uh, make sure it all drains out properly. Now that oil is in pretty good condition, but yours might look, uh, might be quite black or like muddy and mucky. So just pay attention to that because that will probably indicate the conditions of other components on the inside of the fork there. Okay, so as you slide it out, you'll still get some dripping out the bottom here. So just prepare for this. And of course you might get some leaking out the top there. And just carefully slide them off. There we go. Okay, just let those drain out. Now it's a case of cleaning both the upper and lower legs down. Now I'm just gonna let this drain out and we're gonna focus on the upper legs. We'll give them a bit of an inspection as well because you wanna make sure that your stanchion tubes are nice and smooth. There's no sort of scratches and nicks in them. Now, if there is a scratch, chances are your fork will probably be all right. If it's a major gouge, then you might want to get a second opinion on that. But if there's any scratches, the thing that could be damaging to your forks, given that the rubber seal has to pass over them, is if they have any burrs on them. So it's possible if yours does have a scratch with a burr, you can remove that with an extremely fine metal file, a bit of metal polish, and just polish it out. And if necessary, you can get repair kits for stanchions just to fill in the void there. Um, I've used nail varnish in the past, just to do this as a temporary fix, but there is a company out there that makes specific product for that. So very handy stuff. Now for cleaning the inside, a little bit different. Obviously you wanna make sure you clean them around the seals and inspect those for damage. Um, I've got a new set of seals here, but I'm not gonna replace these today because they, they don't need it, I know they don't. But you're looking for any splits, uh, perhaps if the seal is perished, anything like that. 
If it is damaged, you're going to need to replace it. Now, as far as removing them goes, you can do this with a ring spanner. Uh, it's not like the correct tool, but it will do the job absolutely fine. But when it comes to reseating them, it can be a problem if you don't have the setting tool. Now, it's quite a specific tool. Again, just like the, the step cast tool, it's an expensive option. So if your seals do need replacing, I do recommend you get in touch with someone that has got the correct tool for this. Um, although I do know plenty of people that have bashed them in using a mallet with a bit of grease. I wouldn't recommend it, but it is possible if you want to go that way. Okay, so I'm just taking a fresh piece of shop towel here. I'm just gonna give the upper legs a bit of a wipe down and just give them, just generally inspect them, make sure there's no sort of wear where there shouldn't be. If you're seeing any paint missing here at this stage, uh, that's signs of a really badly maintained fork and almost certainly you'll have damaged components to it. So if that's the case, you'll wanna get down to your local bike shop. We'll get some advice from an independent suspension tuner for that. But if like these ones, your forks are looking in pretty good condition, then you're nearly on the home straight. So we're not messing with the damper on the inside today and we're not messing with the air spring on the inside. This is literally a lower leg service. It's really quite simple. Now I'm gonna move on to cleaning the inside of the lowers. Now something to, to note with this is it's extremely hard to get into the inside. Don't be tempted to put any sort of uh, anything metallic in there because the fact you've got the bushings on which the forks actually slide up and down and they can be damaged quite easily. What I tend to do is just flush them through with isopropyl alcohol, disc brake cleaner, anything like that. Bit of water, then let them properly dry out. You can also stuff down some shop towel in there just to make sure you absorb some of that. Uh, but before I do that, I'm gonna remove the foam rings from the inside. Now the foam rings sit just underneath the seals here and they don't always need replacing can be quite tricky to get out. That's why you need a little fine pick just to get in here. Now these can be cleaned up quite easily if they're in condition like this. So I'm actually gonna reuse these rather than fitting some fresh ones in. I'm gonna save them for when I uh, get around to winter. But have a look at the top of the seal here. You can see there's quite a little gunk around there. Although on the inside, it looks pretty good. So let's just give this a bit of a clean here before I start putting some isopropyl alcohol. So the whole time just being quite delicate with them and making sure there's no sort of foreign debris on the inside there. Now I'm just gonna give them a bit of a spray of disc brake cleaner around the inside here. This is essentially like isopropyl alcohol and acetone. You can use contact cleaner for this. I wouldn't be tempted to use anything as, as hardcore as a degreaser on the inside here. Now I'm just gonna give these a final wipe over and then we're gonna look at replacing the foam rings on the inside. Now something to note with the foam rings when you replace them, there's two ways that you can do this. Now to clean these out, of course, you wanna make sure that you've got no old contaminated oil on them. Uh, so again, you can use a degreaser, disc brake cleaner, something like that, making sure that they're actually in pretty good condition. Now, some people actually like to soak these in the same oil they're going to use on the inside, which is a really good way of doing it, but you need quite a lot of oil and it can be quite wasteful doing it this way. Now, something I prefer to do is actually put the fresh ones or put the old clean ones in place and actually saturate them with oil using a syringe once they're inside. Uh, I find I use a little less oil that way and I find it's a little less messy as well. As I say, these foam rings are actually in really good condition, but yours might be absolutely filthy. So um, there's only so much rescuing you can do and they don't cost a lot of money to replace. As you can see, that one's come up pretty well if you look at it by comparison to one that's come out. So I'm gonna cont continue to clean that one and then we're gonna fit those back in again. Okay, so we've got our two cleaned rings. As you can see by looking at a fresh one, they don't look a million miles away. So we're gonna go ahead and reinstall these now into the fork. And you just delicately just push them into place. Make sure they sit in there nice and neatly. And then we'll soak these of oil while they're in situ. Okay, that's all good. And these are essentially just like it's like a trough and it just, you saturate these with oil and it just helps the seal pass nice and freely over that slider there in combination with the oil that sits at the bottom that has a bit of a capillary action and just lubricates the slider there. 
Okay, so time to prep the syringes there with the correct amount of oil. So on this fork, I have the five weight oil that goes in the damper leg and it's 40 cc in there. And it's in this fork, it's 10 cc of the 20 weight that goes in the air leg. There we go. I'm just going to have a little bit more of each of these so I can put some onto the actual foam rings and apply this directly to the ring. And it's super porous, so it absorbs it really well. This might not be the method that works for you, but it definitely works for me. And I know quite a few other people that do it the same way. Because this stuff is really, really slippery. And it makes it a lot easier to apply it. Okay, so everything is clean and it's inspected and it's time to basically reassemble. Now, it's really important to note that you get the correct oil and the correct oil volumes for your particular fork. Pretty simple stuff. But to put it in, basically you need to put the fork back together again and you need to leave a little gap between the foot, basically the foot rods at the bottom of the fork there and you squirt it in with the fork inverted so it avoids getting any mess. I've seen people put it directly into the legs and try and reassemble and half it just comes straight back out again. So that's not gonna be the best for you. And one last thing, just before you reassemble these, put a smidgen of suspension grease just around the wiper seals, uh, just underneath. You don't need too much in here, just a small amount. Now when it comes to sliding the legs back on, you need to be really careful to not damage the seals. So just take your time as you do this and you need to try and line them up as best as you can. There we go, there's one. You should find then that they slide on nicely. Now, if you've removed any air from your air chamber whilst doing this, you may need a bit more air in there just to help extend the bottom of this rod here. Now, as you can see, you can see they're both poking out the bottom. I'm not gonna be able to put the lubricant into them like that. So I'm just gonna pull them back slightly. Now I'm gonna invert the fork. I'm gonna do this in the work stand. It's got the luxury of using this here. So I'm just gonna tilt this up very slightly to this angle. And then it's a case of the 10 cc's into the air chamber, or the bottom of the air leg even. That's going in nicely. And this fork is 40 cc's in the damper leg. Time to slide them home. Again, now you wanna make sure that your crush washers are in good condition before you put the fork back together. I'm um, happy with these ones on this particular fork, so you almost have to thread these on just in place. And then foot nuts go on, or the foot bolts, depending on what you're using. Once these are in place, I'm actually going to remove my gloves because these gloves are so slippery now, I won't be able to use the tooling properly. Okay, we're nearly home and dry. Uh, just got to make sure you do up the foot bolts or foot nuts on your particular fork. Now, something important to say here is it's recommended to use a torque wrench for this. Uh, I've got one here and I know the newton meters that I need is 5.7 for these particular ones. It's completely different whatever your particular fork is. So I'm gonna leave this up to you to make sure you do this right. I'm just gonna nip these up first. But if in doubt and you don't have a torque wrench to hand, you don't need to do these very tight. Like 5.7 newton meters isn't very tight. So just use caution with these. So I'll just dial this in at the bottom here. There we go, 5.7. There we go, I was pretty close to that, just by guessing. I've seen people hanging off these before. There we go. So we know it's all good. Now it's just a case of getting the rebound dial on the bottom, just make sure everything lines up. Now it takes a tiny little two millimeter Allen key here. Uh, there isn't actually a torque setting for this, so just take care. Uh, it's only a tiny grub screw. Only needs enough just to hold on. Don't forget you've got the cover. So just to confirm that, that works, no problem. And you have your little cover that goes on the bottom here to protect them. Finger tight is all that's required. And there we go. Uh, you want to just clean the exterior of the fork. Make sure it's got no sort of oil residue on there. 
uh, cycle it through the action a few times, uh, clean any residue off the fork stanchions at the top there. And if you need to reinflate, inflate to the pressure that you checked at the beginning and get it back on your bike and go and enjoy it. Uh, just remember, it's all just about taking care of your fork from the amount that you actually ride the bike. So the 50 hours is a guideline, but you'll know if your fork needs a bit of attention and you'll be amazed how good your fork will feel after doing one of these little mini services. It'll feel so good, so supple and grippy on the small stuff. Um, that's pretty much it. It's a similar process for just about every suspension fork out there. So hopefully this video has been helpful for you. Uh, leave us some feedback in the comments underneath. If there's any other videos you want us to make here at GMBN Tech, do let us know and we'll see you in the next one. See you later.